Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Turn your Bibles to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30. Jeremiah is one of those books about judgment. Judgment upon God's people for disobedience. Now, you know, there's a, a lot of controversy about who are God's chosen people. Uh, the modern churches will tell you they're the people that call themselves Jews over in the Middle East. The black Hebrews will tell you that they're the Israelites of the Bible. The people that adhere to Christian identity will tell you that the white Christians are the chosen people. The black nation of Islam, Louis Farrakhan, he'll tell you, well, the black Muslims, they're the chosen people. And then you got the Arabs over in the Middle East. They'll tell you, hey, we're the chosen people. Who's right? Well, we're going to do some Bible reading and uh, take a little, little bit of history and current events. But let's take a look. Before we get into all that, and, and I don't want to stray far from the Bible. Now, those of you that have listened to me for a while, well, a lot of this information is not going to be new. But this is more for new listeners. The name of this Bible study is going to be the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob was the son of Isaac, who was the son of Abraham. And he had 12 sons, which became the 12 tribes of Israel. So let's take a look at Jeremiah chapter 30. Verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel. You see, Jacob's name was changed by God himself, to Israel. Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah. Hmm, the Lord makes a distinction here between Israel and Judah that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. What does he mean, bring again the captivity? Well, Israel was in captivity in Egypt. Remember the book of Exodus when Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt? Well, Lord's getting ready to take them back into captivity under Babylon. Well, actually, Israel was taken into captivity by the Assyrians. And their capital was Samaria. But then you had Judah, whose capital was Jerusalem. You see, they're not necessarily the same people. Contrary to what your pastor lied to you, you see, Israel's capital was Samaria. They had a king called Ahab. Jerusalem was the capital of Judah. They had a king called Jehoshaphat. They had different kings, different land areas, different capitals. How can that be? Doesn't your pastor tell you that they're all the same people? Uh, well, if you don't believe me, read the book of First and Second Kings, and you'll learn something. So here it is, the Lord put Israel into captivity by the Assyrians, and now he's angry at the wickedness of Judah, and he's going to have them go into captivity by the Babylonians. Perhaps you've heard of King Nebuchadnezzar. Perhaps you've read the book of Daniel. Daniel was a prince of Judah, and he went to Babylon. I mean, you know... You do yourself a huge disservice if you haven't read the entire Bible from cover to cover. Verse 3, For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. 
and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Now, when Israel was taken, when Judah was taken in, into, well, I'm sorry. All right, when Israel was taken into captivity by the Assyrians, they never returned to the land. They scattered. But when Judah was taken into captivity by Babylon, well, when Babylon collapsed, God pronounced 70 years that he was going to put them into captivity. And 70 years later, the Medes and the Persians conquered Babylon. And Cyrus and Darius and allowed Judah to return to Jerusalem and rebuild it. You can read about this in the book of Ezra. You can read about this in the book of Nehemiah. You never heard of those books, huh? Well, my fault? No. You want to watch uh, Kim Kardashian? Or are you going to watch football and baseball? And or are you going to watch soap operas? Or are you going to spend your time reading the Word of God? Actually, if you don't like reading, that's fine. I mean, there are websites on YouTube and that where you can listen to the Word of God either online or on CD. There's a guy named Alexander Scorby, S-C-O-U-R-B-Y, and he does the King James Bible on CD. Shakespearean actor, wonderful voice. You can listen to it. You can listen to it on your way to work, on your way home from work, on your way shopping, in your car or your SUV or your truck. You know, what are you going to do with your time? Drink beer and yell at the TV on Sunday watching the football game? Or watch soap operas? And watch the uh, husband leave his wife for his gay lover? Uh, well, what can I tell you? All right, so God says he was going to bring them into captivity, and then he was going to let them return to the land. And 99% or more of your pastors will tell you that in 1948 that the people that call themselves Jews over in the land that call themselves Israelis, they he'll say, well, that's the fulfillment of this prophecy. But is it? I don't know. We'll get to that later. Saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. See, not the same people. Verse 4. Now verse 5. For thus saith the Lord, We have heard a voice trembling of fear and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth prevail with child. Does a man have childbirth? No. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Hmm. So can Africans have their faces turned to paleness? What does the word pale mean? Look it up in a Webster's Dictionary. Verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Hmm. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. That's the name of this Bible study. Verse 8. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God, hmm. and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. And who is that? Who's David their king? Well, wasn't Christ a son of David? Absolutely unless you listen to the um, Noahide 
Messianic people, N-O-A-H-I-D-E. There are a bunch of people that think, they call themselves Jews, they believe that the Messiah is the Jews themselves keeping, teaching people how to keep the law. Does keeping the law save people? Not if you believe Jesus, which I do. So, but they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord. Neither be dismayed, O Israel. See, Israel and, and Jacob are synonyms. For lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed, children, and thy seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee. Ooh. But I will correct thee. In other words, you're going to get a spanking, buddy boy. But I will correct thee in measure and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. For thus saith the Lord, thy bruise is incurable and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up Thou hast no healing medicines. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not. And who were there? Who was Israel's lovers? Baal, Ashtaroth, Moloch. You name every false heathen satanic religion out there. And those were their lovers. Oh, yeah. All thy lovers have forgotten thee, they seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement. What does it mean to be chastised? Whipped. With the chastisement of a cruel one. For the multitude of thine iniquity. What's iniquity? Sin, wickedness. For the multitude of thine, of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. Oh, yeah. All right, verse 15. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity. Because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. Where, therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, and all thine adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. And not P-R-A-Y, but P-R-E-E-Y. You've heard of predators and prey? Well, an eagle's a predator, and a squirrel would be prey. For I will restore, for I will restore health unto thee. And I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents, and have mercy on its dwelling places. And the city shall be builded upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Hmm. Their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me. And I will punish all that oppress them. And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them. 
And I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me, saith the Lord? And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Where have we read that before in the New Testament? We'll get to that. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury. A continuing whirlwind, it shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. Of the, wicked. the fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he have done it, and until he have performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it. In the latter days. That means in the last days. Latter means towards the end. Here's an interesting verse. Second Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 1. It's called Chronicles because it was the chronicles or the, the things that the kings of Israel and Judah did. Verse 1. Second Chronicles 15, 1. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa. Now, Asa was a king. And said unto him, Now, he was a king of Judah. Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you, while ye be with him. And if ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. In other words, if you look for the Lord, you'll find him. And if you run away from the Lord, he'll let you do it. You turn your back on the Lord, and the Lord will turn his back on you. No problem. I did weddings for a number of years, and uh, I 90% of the time I talked to the brides, almost exclusively. A lot of times... I wouldn't even talk to the groom until the day of the wedding. Never even met him, never talked to him, nothing, you know. And uh, I, I asked this bride, I said, well, when you do the wedding ceremony, would you like to have a uh, civil, non-religious wedding ceremony? Or would you like to have a Christian ceremony? with Bible readings. And she says, oh, I absolutely want a civil, non-religious wedding. I don't want God anywhere near my marriage. I probably should have spoke up and said something, but uh, I was thinking, well, I'm sure God's going to honor your request. What can I tell you? Verse 3. Now for a long season Israel hath been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without the law. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. Hmm. And in all those times there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in, but great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. And nation was destroyed of nation, and city of city, for God did vex them with all adversity. Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. And when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Oded the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols. When it says he put them away, it means he didn't put them in the closet for future use. It means he destroyed them. And put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and renewed the altar of the Lord that was before porch of the Lord. Hmm. Oh yeah. 
God wants us to put away our strange gods. He's a jealous God. Isn't that in the Ten Commandments? He's a jealous God. All right, so you don't know who Jacob is? Genesis 35 and verse 10. And then we're going to read verse 32, I mean 22. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. Israel basically means prince with God or rules with God. Uh, let's see. Verse 22. And it came to pass when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Israel heard it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. So Jacob had twelve sons, and they were the twelve tribes of Israel, period. All right, turn to Genesis chapter 17, starting in verse 1. And when Abram was 90 years old, and 9, 99 years old, right? The Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me, and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant... What's a covenant? It's a promise. It's like a contract. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Now, I got an observation here. Now, the Arabs claim descent from Abraham, and I can believe that through Ishmael. And the Jews claim descent from Abraham and Judah. And there's a, a sect within Christianity that calls themselves uh, identity. And they claim descent from Abraham. Okay. But it says, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. If there's one little Middle Eastern Jewish state, Israeli state, one, is one many, where's all these many nations of Abraham, where are they? One little Jewish state in the Middle East created by the United Nations in 1948. I mean, before 1948, there was zero. According to denominational preachers, where's all these many nations of Abraham? Where are they? Does one make many? No, absolutely not. So either the Bible lied or the denominational preachers don't know what they're talking about. You can figure out what you want to do with that little piece of information. Verse 5. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Okay. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, in their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed, children, after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, 
Thou shalt keep my covenant. Therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Well, back in the Old Testament, it was circumcision of the flesh. In the New Testament, we're told to be circumcised in the heart or of the spirit. Okay? So, hmm. Let's skip down the verse. Uh, well, let's see. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. And uh, let's see. Verse. Uh, all right, we'll read it again. Verse 10. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Well, you know, the Arabs practice female circumcision. Where's that in the Bible? It's not. It's, I call it genital mutilation myself. But, uh, yeah, if you want to do some research on that, you can. Well, verse 11, And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house, or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house, and he that is bought with thy money, must needs be circumcised. And my, circum and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man-child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarah, Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations, plural. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? Oh yeah. You're going to have a hundred-year-old father and a ninety-year-old mom? Uh, well... With God is anything impossible? And Abraham said unto the God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. See, Ishmael was Abraham's firstborn son by Hagar, the Egyptian woman. And God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall indeed shall bear thee a son indeed. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. Not Ishmael. Nope. Verse 20. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him. And I will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac. With Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. Not He made his covenant with Abraham and with Isaac. Not Ishmael, but God said he was going to bless Ishmael. He said he was going to make him fruitful, multiply him. Twelve princes shall he beget, and make him a great nation. Does that apply to the Muslim world today, the Arabs? Well, I shouldn't say Muslim. I should say the Arabic world. Do you know there are hundreds of millions of Arabs? How come there's a paltry 12 to 15 million Jews? I thought if, if they are the children of Isaac, with this covenant and many nations... 
how come there's hundreds of millions of Arabs and only a few million paltry Jews? What's up? Did God break his promise here in Genesis? Or are we thinking the wrong things about the wrong people? Did God break his promise? Or have we failed to identify who the children of Isaac are? And who the children of Ishmael are? See, the Arabs are, they fit the description of Ishmael. But God's covenant was not with Ishmael. It was with Isaac. Now, if you're interested, I've got a bunch of playlists on my YouTube channel that go into in-depth studies of some of the topics that I'm covering here. But if you want to read about Ishmael, you can read it in Genesis chapter 21. Um, Sarah actually told Abraham to send his son Isaac, I mean Ishmael, away from his son Isaac. You know, separate them, let him go, kick him out. And he did. He did. So, let's take a look. In Genesis chapter 16, God said, listen to this, Genesis 16 and verse 12. Listen carefully. And he, who's he talking about here? Ishmael. And he will be a wild man. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Now, if your pastor says this is not true about the Arabs, then to whom does this apply to? Does God lie or make promises he cannot keep? I know better than that. Has the children of Ishmael been wild men and live in the midst of their brethren and have their hands against every man? Oh yeah, I would say so. Most certainly. So why are they importing all these wild men into Europe? Well, we'll get to that later. All right, so let's take a look at some more stuff here. Now remember, God made his covenant with Abraham. He said he would make his covenant with Isaac. And then he made it the covenant with Isaac's son, Jacob. Now remember, Isaac had two sons, Jacob and Esau. And of course, the black Hebrews will tell you that Esau is the white people. More on that later, I guess. Let's see. Now, in Leviticus 26, verse 42, God said, Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, who became Israel, right? Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember, and I will remember the land. Psalms 105, verse 10, And confirm the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. How long is everlasting? Forever. Acts Let's go to the New Testament, Acts chapter 7 and verse 8. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision, and so Abraham begat Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat the twelve patriarchs, or the twelve tribes, right? So, Exodus 2 and verse 24. And God heard their groanings, you know, Israel, when they were in bondage and slavery to Egypt. And God heard their groanings, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. Hmm. Now, Isaac had two sons. He had Esau, and he had Jacob, whose name he changed to Israel. Two sons. How come Esau didn't get a covenant? Well, Esau didn't care about the things of God. Matter of fact, if you want to see how God felt about Esau, well, you should take a look at Malachi chapter 1. 
Matter of fact, let's take a look at that real quick. You know, that you hear the people say, well, you know, God loves everybody. Really? Malachi chapter 1, verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. And if you look in the Bible, the Bible says that a man's heritage are his children. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Don't believe it? Psalms. 127 and verse 3. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. All right, so what about the uh, dragons of the wilderness? Well, the uh, Bible tells you what the dragon is, right? But if you're not sure, Revelation 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So Esau is in big trouble, if you ask me. Because we read, didn't we read Malachi 1 and verse 3? And I hated Esau, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Oh, remember that next time somebody tells you, oh yeah, God loves everybody. I don't think so. Matter of fact, you know, you got to realize something. Esau was a son of Isaac, who was a son of Abraham. And yet, let's read Romans chapter 9, verse 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Who are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Not Ishmael. Verse 8, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, Ishmael, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. That's Isaac, people. For this is the word of promise. At this time I will come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, listen carefully. Verse 11. For the children being not yet born, who? Esau and Jacob. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. 
what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he hath say, for he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith of Pharaoh, Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to he that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the, pow the potter power over the clay, of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor, and another unto dishonor. You see, Jacob and Esau were from the same mother and father. And yet Jacob was made for honor and Esau for dishonor. You see, Esau hated the things of God. Jacob loved the things of God. Verse 22. What if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long-suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he hath afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Now I did a study on election, recently. So if you want to, you know, read more about this, you can take a look at some of my older studies. I can't keep track of them anymore. I have over 800 different studies. So, all right, let's take a look. All right, verse 25. As he saith also in O.C., which is the Greek rendering of the book Hosea, and uh, like I say, go look at my playlist. I go into some, the covenants of Abraham and Israel and Egypt and Exodus. I go into ex detail on these studies. I've got a, many, many, many hours of studies on the playlist. I'm just basically scratching the surface here. As he saith also in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And who was this? Israel. Because Israel was divorced. In Jeremiah 3.8, God divorced Israel. They were his people, then they were not his people. But now, back at Christ, is going to reconcile us back up to God. Now, we're his people again. And it shall come to place, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaiah, that's Isaiah, Greek rendering. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish work, and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as, as, and as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been as Sodom, and had it been like unto Gomorrah, like Sodom and Gomorrah. What shall we say then, that the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith, not keeping the the Noahide laws, not keeping the Torah. Faith, people. 
faith. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Sion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Now, those of you that listen to me on a regular basis, I know I, it seems like I keep going over the same material, but you got to realize sometimes this is for uh, new listeners. And also, I feel my ministry is geared up to prepare people for the end times because the church is, uh, the ministry of the churches is John 3.16, you know, God so loved the world and tithing. Oh, yeah. That's their ministry. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and pass that collection plate around. Well, you noticed, I don't beg for money. So, what can I tell you? All right, 1 Corinthians 10.1. So, did God make his covenant with the whole world? Well, he didn't make it with Esau. He didn't make it with Ishmael. He blessed Ishmael. But he didn't make his covenant with Ishmael. No. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. The Corinthians is, is, is a church in Greece, a, a city in Greece, Corinth. How could they be baptized under Moses? Huh? It means some of them had to be Israelites. Verse 3, And did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they rank, drank, drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. What's the stone of offense to the Jews? Christ. What's the rock of offense? Christ. Even to this day, they are in unbelief. But there is a remnant that will come to Christ. There is a remnant. Now, do Jews have an everlasting covenant with Christ and don't need Jesus to get into heaven? Well, that's that's what a lot of churches teach today. So let's take a look. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 5. Now therefore, if, big I-F, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. So, when God made his covenant, he says they had to obey his voice and keep the covenant. How about Jeremiah 11 and verse 10? They are turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers, which refused to hear my words. And they went after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah, not the same, the house of Ju Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. See, it wasn't God that broke the covenant. It was Israel and Judah that broke the covenant. You know what happens when you break a covenant or a contract? It's null and void. Period. Leviticus 18, verse 5. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do. He shall live in them. I am the Lord. How about Jeremiah verse 3 and verse 8? Did you know that God divorced Israel? Oh yeah. And I saw, Jeremiah 3, 8, and I saw when, for all the causes, whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, spiritual adultery. I had put her away 
and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. You know what a harlot is? A whore, a slut. Jeremiah 5.11, for the house of Israel and the house of Judah have dealt very treacherously against me, saith the Lord. So, is there another plan of salvation for unbelieving Jews? Well, what did Peter say in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12? I think it was Peter. He says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name, what name? Jesus, not Yeshua. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. If the Bible was going to say Yeshua, it would have said Yeshua, but it wasn't written in Hebrew. It was written in Greek. Matter of fact, in the book of Titus, Paul writes in verse uh, Titus 1, verses 12 through 15, One of their selves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars. Evil be slow belly, bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. You see, people, when you get people that are bringing in obviously false doctrines, it says to rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. This witness is true, therefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Not giving heed, that means don't pay attention, not giving heed to Jewish fables. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, are the Jews believing or are they unbelieving? Unto the pure are all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. Hmm. Now, if... God made his covenant with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, who became Israel, but he hated Esau, who was Jacob's brother, and he said he would bless Ishmael, who was Isaac's half, well, half-brother, but he didn't make his covenant with Ishmael. He didn't make his covenant with Esau. So who did Jesus die for? Well, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. And when he, Jesus, and when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, twelve disciples, one for each tribe of the twelve tribes, you're going to find that the number seven and the number twelve fits very prominently into the Bible a lot. Numbers twelve and, and seven, a lot. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew's brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Libius, whose thir surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and some, of, some people would try to tell you that Simon was an actual Canaanite by blood. I don't think so. He, you know, Jesus was called, Jesus was born in Nazareth, but yet he was called a Galilean. Jesus of Galilee. You know, where you're born is what you're called. If you were born, you, your parents might be from Germany, but if you came to America, you'd be called an American, right? You know, so... Jesus was uh, born in Nazareth, but he was called 
of Galilee. You know, Jesus the Ga Galilean. So, Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Didn't we read in Jeremiah 3.8 how God divorced Israel? Oh yeah, God divorced Israel. But here it says, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why were they lost? Because God divorced them. They were without hope. They were without a chance of salvation. Oh yeah. In Matthew 15, 24, we're told in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall everything be established. Matthew 15, 24. Who's speaking here? Jesus. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Well, that's interesting. So, Jesus said he was sent for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Abraham, confirmed with Isaac, confirmed with Jacob, who became Israel. Now, who are these people? You know, like I mentioned earlier, you've got all kinds of different groups saying that they are Israel. Who are they? Does the Bible give you clues as to who these people are? Absolutely, they do. It does. So, I guess we're going to make this a part one. You know, I, I those of you that listen to me a long time, uh, a lot of this information is not new to you. But I'm in part two. I'm going to identify from the Bible alone who is Israel. And then probably at part three, or maybe part two, I don't know, I'm going to go into the latter days, the end times, the time of Jacob's trouble. And I think it's very important to identify who Jacob Israel is, and then point out what was prophesied for the future, what would happen to them. And I think it's already starting to pass, come to pass. So... All right, we're going to make this the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. I guess this is going to be the introduction. So, All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you want to know what I believe, I believe every word in the King James Bible from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22. And if you want to, you can look up the Apostles' Creed. It means I believe. When you see the word Catholic there, well, the word Catholic just means universal. It's not talking about the church at Rome with a pope. Uh, they might have adopted the word Catholic, but that doesn't mean they are. I mean, look at, you know, a hundred years ago, the word gay meant happy. Nowadays, the modern usage of the word gay means a sodomite. So, you know, uh, what can I tell you? So, all right, well, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministry, signing off. In Jesus' name, amen.